I'm not exactly comfortable with using my real name. So, I'll be referring to myself as Oliver. Please excuse some of my broken English. English isn't my first language. But I used to work at uh, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater when I was in high school. I worked at the East uh, Norristown, Pennsylvania location uh, for about seven months. I was both a janitor and maintenance worker. I repaired and checked on the animatronics and, well, simply put, cleaned up the shit the guests left. Around June of 1983, we got something called the Chuck E. Street attraction installed at our location. It was a street with some buildings lined up. There were a few rides inside, and you could operate them via tokens. It was moderately enjoyable there, I gotta say. A couple kids would come in from time to time, play, and then leave. But despite not many kids playing there, the messes they left made it look like hundreds of kids were. I mean, I'm talking spilled cups of soda, pizza crusts, mushy tickets, spit, grease, sometimes vomit from where I had to clean every day. And this went on for months until December, my seventh and final month working there. Cheesy Street was barely visited anymore, so the mess was easier to manage. And one day, specifically on December 2nd, a little girl asked me if it was safe in one of the houses where I was sweeping greasy tissue paper off the floor. I reassured her with my broken English as best I could that it was perfectly safe in there. All props were clean, and the rides were working. She peeked in and looked at me again, and said flatly, But the man will get me. That sentence threw me off, but I knew it must have been a rumor around the playground or something, as four boys just walked out of there, unhurt and laughing. I reassured her again that everything was okay, and she nodded. She walked in, reaching in a Chuck E. Cheese token pouch as she disappeared from my sight. I turned back to the mess and continued sweeping, and once I finished, I headed over to the ball pit, cleaning tools in hand. I didn't see that girl again. A couple of hours later, I'm standing near the balcony stage while the performer in the Chuck E. Cheese costume dances with a birthday kid. While monitoring, a mother runs up to me and begins telling me that she can't find her daughter anywhere. I assured her that we'll find her and asked for her daughter's appearance. Short, black hair, hazel eyes, missing a front tooth, with a red shirt and a yellow skirt. And that's exactly what the girl I saw earlier looked like. I immediately radioed a coworker and both went to Cheesy Street to storm in to investigate. Nothing. I mean, no trace, no nothing. We checked almost everywhere. Keyword, almost. We should have checked everywhere. We both reported back to our manager, and he told us to continue our jobs while he checked in with the police. My coworker went back to the control room to check the cameras for anything, and I went back to Cheesy Street. Five boys began walking towards the same entrance the girl went into. I began telling them to go somewhere else, but the rebellious teens entered anyway and hopped onto the spinning ride. The one in the blue sweater put in two tokens into the slot, and the ride started. 
and how I wish I could forget what happened next. Because it turns out that the girl was under the ride in between the iron rods that not only held up the ride, but made it spin. The metal rods began forcing themselves through the fully awake girl, and muffled screams could be heard from beneath it. I could barely hear it over the music and mechanical whirs, but I immediately shut off the music and began trying to find a way to shut off the ride. But I didn't have the key to open the control panel. And as I scrambled over the glass, I heard it. Tearing. Tearing and snapping of the girl from below. The screams loudened until they stopped. Maroon spread from below. The smell was unbearable, and just the thought of the girl brought tears to my eyes. The ride then broke. It stopped in its tracks. The girl's parts jammed the mechanics and stopped it. The boy stepped off and looked back at the scene. Two threw up, one screamed, one began crying, and the one in blue just ran off. I just stared. I wanted to scream, throw up, cry, run away, but I was... But I was frozen in fear. In the darkness of the house, I saw... Something. A man wearing a paper chuck mask stared at me from the darkness. He made a thumbs-up motion with his left hand and began walking away. I looked back at the scene and back at the now-formed crowd. Co-workers began running up and ushering people away, and, and, and I soon realized that that man took the life of a child for what seemed to be sport. I couldn't let this slip away. I ran in after him. I could hear his footsteps pick up in speed. I chased him him through the rooms up until I reached the far end, and noticed there was a giant hole near the bottom right. I could see the debris of brick and wooden planks all around, and I began thinking of how the hell the kid even knew of the man before entering. I crawled out the hole and just, just walked home. I didn't return to work, I just, I just isolated myself. I didn't open any letters or notices, I didn't even care about my paycheck after a while. I just sat there, I let her die. Years later, I let go of the guilt and found a new job, you know, I, I never talked about it ever and was never interrogated of anything. I was just let off the hook.